I got my first biopsy this morning. I have a mole that grows right here. As long as it behaves like a good mole, I let it live. But inevitably, I'll be scrubbing my face with a washcloth and the mole will start bleeding because I'm scrubbing too hard. When it starts bleeding, I get annoyed and I burn it off with acid. Then I won't have a mole for five or six months until it grows back, at which time we repeat the process and the dance continues. But a while back, I was reading an article that said, if you've got a mole that itches and bleeds, you need to get it checked out because it could be a cancerous growth. So today, a dermatologist sliced off my mole and sent it to a lab to check for cancer. Side note, they didn't like the fact that I've spent years burning a mole off with acid. As I was leaving the dermatologist's office, I asked, what are they going to do with the mole when they're done with it? Are they going to bury it? That was a subtle allusion to the 1987 film Adventures in Babysitting. What did they do with the hand? Did they bury it? No, I wouldn't let them. I kept it. Long story short, I started thinking about the difference between a doctor cutting a mole off my body and a doctor cutting a fetus out of a woman's body. We're told that a fetus, like a mole, might be wanted or unwanted, but at the end of the day, they're both just little lumps of cells that can be removed at will. This brings us to Dave Chappelle's comedy special, Sticks and Stones. Dave Chappelle is a genius. If you don't believe me, think about how he deals with the topic of abortion. One wrong comment on a sensitive issue like abortion can end a comedian's career. But not Dave's, because he's way, way smarter than the critics who complain about him. I've seen videos and articles discussing Chappelle's comments on abortion. I'd like to add my own thoughts, because I don't think that anyone has grasped how brilliant he was in this little two-minute section of Sticks and Stones. Before we go through some clips, I'm going to give a graphic language warning in case you're watching this on your phone as you're waiting for Sunday school to start. I could censor some of the words, but some of them are part of his argument, so I'm just going to leave everything as is. Now, Watch what he does here. This is mad scientist level argumentation. I'm not for abortion. Uh-oh, Dave Chappelle is not for abortion. The crowd goes quiet. I'm sure there were some pro-lifers in the audience, but they've learned not to draw attention to themselves and not to trust Chappelle when he transitions to a new topic. But he continues. I'm not for it, but I'm not against it either. Chappelle's not against abortion, so we can cheer and breathe a sigh of relief. But wait a minute, how can someone as opinionated as Dave Chappelle be neutral on such a sensitive issue? It all depends on who I get pregnant. <laughs> it all depends on who I get pregnant. The audience laughs because that would be a revolting moral position. If a man is against abortion when it's someone else's child, but he's for abortion when it's his own child, then his ethical views are based on whatever's convenient for him at a given time. And that's just horrifying. It's wrong to steal, unless I decide to steal from someone. It's wrong to torture old ladies, unless some old lady annoys me, then it's okay. It's wrong to abort babies, unless it's convenient for me. Now, there are people who are like that. There are men who are against abortion until they get their girlfriends pregnant, and then their position suddenly changes. But people like that usually don't admit it in front of an audience. So the audience laughs, knowing that Chappelle isn't serious. What then is his position? I don't care, I'll tell you right now, I don't care what your religious beliefs are or anything. If you have a dick, you need to shut the fuck up on this one. Seriously. This is theirs. The right to choose is their unequivocal right. If you're a man, you need to shut up about abortion. 
The right to choose is the unequivocal right of women. And you can hear women in the audience cheering with glee, apparently not realizing that Chappelle likes to bait people into cheering for positions that he's about to demolish. He goes on. Not only do I believe they have the right to choose, I believe that they shouldn't have to consult anybody except for a physician about how they exercise that right. Gentlemen, that is fair. That is fair. Women shouldn't have to consult anyone apart from a physician on whether they choose to abort their babies. They shouldn't even have to consult the fathers. That's fair. And the women in the audience once again cheer with glee because all of this is being said on Dave Chappelle's Netflix special. And now that Chappelle has convinced the audience to take a firm, audible stand on a sensitive issue, he takes them for a little ride through Consistency County. And ladies, to be fair to us, I also believe if you decide to have the baby, a man should not have to pay. <laughs> So, if it's fair for men to grant that women have the unequivocal right to choose whether to have their babies, then, to be fair, women should grant that men have the unequivocal right not to pay for a baby that a woman chooses to have. Remember, a woman is not required to consult anyone besides a physician. The father doesn't have to be a factor in her decision. She doesn't have to consult him. So the decision to have the baby or not to have the baby rests solely with the mother. If that's the case, then she bears sole responsibility for her decision to have the baby, and a man should not have to pay for the woman's decision. Now, someone could raise an objection here. Someone could say, well, the woman decides to have an abortion when the child is still in the womb, but the man is required to support the child after he or she has been born. So they're not the same thing. I'm not convinced that this is a good objection. At least, I'm not convinced that there's a sound defense of this objection. The man could make his decision not to support the child while the child is still in the womb. And if we're defending choices and rights, then the woman's choice should have no bearing on the man's choice. The man has chosen not to pay for the child. If the woman decides to have the child anyway, that's her choice, and we should respect both choices. By the way, this isn't what I'm saying. This is how I think someone could defend what Chappelle is saying. But let's see if Chappelle can flesh out this claim. If you can kill this motherfucker, I can at least abandon him. <laughs> One way to make an argument without actually stating a conclusion that could get you into trouble, is to provide a premise of the argument, knowing that your listener already believes an additional premise, which, when combined with the premise you provided, leads to the conclusion. What do I mean here? Well, Chappelle provides this premise. Premise one, if a woman has the right to kill her unborn child, then a man has the right to abandon his unborn child. But most of the audience members believe, premise two, a man does not have the right to abandon his unborn child. From these two premises, we reach the conclusion, therefore, a woman doesn't have the right to kill her unborn child. Logical interlude, the logical form here is called modus tollens, the mode of denying. The pattern is, if A, then B, not B, therefore not A. As an example, if X is a cat, then X is a mammal. X is not a mammal. If we know these two things, what else do we know? We know that X is not a cat. If it's not a mammal, it's not a cat. Logic doesn't get any better than modus tollens. If you take a class on logic, this is one of the argument forms you'll learn on the first or second day. So, if Chappelle's claim, premise one, is correct, and the audience believes premise two, then it follows, via modus tollens, that a woman does not have the right to kill her unborn child. 
But how can Chappelle defend his claim that a man has the right to abandon his unborn child? It's my money, my choice. It's my money, my choice. It's my money, my choice. Chappelle defends his claim by using the exact same defense used by the pro-choice camp. The main slogan of the pro-choice movement is, my body, my choice. I get to choose what to do with my body. No one, not politicians, not journalists, not educators, no one has the right to tell me what to do with my body. Well, I can say the exact same thing about my money. No one, not politicians, not journalists, not educators, no one has the right to tell me what to do with my money. Since the claim, my money, my choice, rests on the exact same moral principle that my body, my choice, rests on, you can't reasonably chant my body, my choice without also granting my money, my choice. What does this mean? It means that if a woman has the right to kill her unborn child, then a man has the right to abandon his unborn child. Why does a woman have the right to kill her unborn child? Her body, her choice. Why does a man have the right to abandon his unborn child? His money, his choice. So Chappelle defends premise one using a method that's championed by the pro-choice camp, which means that the pro-choice camp can't deny his premise without self-destructing their own position. They have to grant his premise, premise one, but again, they already believe premise two, and when the two premises are combined, we get the conclusion, namely, that a woman doesn't have the right to kill her unborn child. Now, you might be wondering whether Chappelle is really presenting the argument as I've laid it out. All he's explicitly claimed is that if women have the right to kill their unborn children, then men have the right to abandon their unborn children. So he could simply be affirming the total dirtbag's position that men don't have to provide for their children. But it's the way that he ends this section of Sticks and Stones that convinces me that he is making the argument as I've laid it out. And that when he insists that men should have the right to abandon their children, he's actually using a kind of reductio ad absurdum, reduction to absurdity. A reductio ad absurdum is where you refute a claim by showing that it leads to an absurdity, in this case, a moral absurdity. After telling women that it's their unequivocal right to choose whether to have their baby or to abort their baby, and after insisting that for the sake of consistency, women should grant that it's the unequivocal right of fathers to choose whether to support their baby or to abandon their baby, and after pointing out that he's using the exact same reasoning that pro-choicers use, he ends with this. And if I'm wrong, then perhaps we're wrong. <laughs> Figure that shit out for yourselves. <laughs> if I'm wrong, then perhaps we're wrong. Figure that one out for yourselves. He's inviting us to figure this out. Well, I think I've got it figured out. There are two ways to be consistent on this issue, and there are two ways to be inconsistent on this issue. The first way to be consistent is to say, yes, women have a right to choose whether or not to have their babies, and men have a right to choose whether or not to support their babies. You can agree with the claim or not, but at least it's consistent. We're applying a consistent moral standard. The second way to be consistent is to say, no, women don't have a right to choose whether or not to have their babies, and men don't have a right to choose whether or not to support their babies. Again, you can agree with the claim or not, but it's consistent, applying the same moral standard to men and women. That leaves us with two ways to be inconsistent. The first way to be inconsistent would be to say, yes, men have the right to choose whether or not to support their babies, but no, women don't have the right to choose whether or not to have their babies. This would be inconsistent. We'd be applying different moral standards. We'd be saying that a woman has to have her baby whether she wants to or not, but that a man doesn't have to support his baby. That would be hypocritical. Fortunately, there aren't many people who hold this position. However, 
There are lots of people who hold to the second inconsistent position. The second way to be inconsistent is to say, yes, women have the right to choose whether or not to have their babies, but men don't have the right to choose whether or not to support their babies. Chappelle's main point, I think, is that the pro-choice camp is made up almost entirely of people who adhere to this inconsistent position. He's calling them hypocrites. And he's right. Think about this. Your average pro-choicer will say, no one has a right to tell a woman what to do with her body. Forcing a woman to do something with her body against her will is tantamount to rape. It's the woman's unequivocal right to choose what to do with her body, and the government should never be allowed to force her to do anything. But if you claim that a man shouldn't have to support his baby, these same pro-choicers will say, how dare you? Of course we have a right to tell a man what to do with his money. A father has a moral and a legal obligation to support his child, whether he wants to or not. If he refuses, the government has to step in and force that man to use his money to support his child, even if it goes completely against his will. Now, wait a minute here. If forcing a woman to use her body against her will is tantamount to rape, isn't forcing a man to use his money against his will tantamount to robbery? But your average pro-choicer would never say that the government can't force a man to spend his money on his child. Your average pro-choicer would demand that the father be forced by the government to use his resources for the good of the child. What kind of sense does it make to turn to a woman and say, no one can tell you that you have to use your body to support that child. Your body, your choice. But then to turn to a man and say, we get to tell you that you have to use your money to support that child. Your money, not your choice. Because there are moral obligations at work here. Namely, that the father of a child has to use his resources to support his child. It seems that the pro-choice movement doesn't rest on any sort of consistent moral standard. Instead, it's based entirely on convenience. If it's convenient for a woman to have an abortion, then she has every right to have an abortion. If it's inconvenient for a woman to have the father abandon the child, then by golly, he has no right to abandon the child. This is just, whatever is in my self-interest, that's my position. Remember when Chappelle said that his view of abortion depends on who he gets pregnant? I'm not for it, but I'm not against it either. It all depends on who I get pregnant. The audience laughed because it was so absurd to hear someone basing his moral claims on nothing other than what's convenient for him. The ethics of convenience is a laughably ridiculous moral position. And it's clearly absurd when a man appeals to it in this context. We laugh at a man who says, it all depends on who I get pregnant, because we assume that he can't be serious. If we thought that he was serious, we would condemn him. But the ethics of convenience, what's right is whatever is in my self-interest, What's wrong is whatever goes against my self-interest lies at the heart of the pro-choice movement. Whether the government gets to tell us what to do depends on whether it's convenient for me or not. Now, I don't know about you, but as far as I'm concerned, this is the most epic two-minute critique of abortion in the history of the world. And when you consider that Chappelle did all of this without saying a single word against abortion, again, this is what I call mad scientist level argumentation. So what do you think? In the comments section, I'd like to know two things. One, do you think that Chappelle's argument, as I've interpreted it and as I've presented it, is a good argument? And two, do you think that this is what Chappelle was really trying to do? Or do you think that he was seriously claiming that men should be able to abandon their children? What was his real intention? Let me know what you think.